Hey, what's up? Yesterday, I shared my favorite infinite marquee that's used only with HTML and CSS, but today I figured I'd try to make it with GSAP. So we'll have a look. This is what we're going to create. If you have not ever made a infinite marquee before, I'll do a quick rundown of how that works. Now let's just have this Excala draw here. Uh, first, okay, so let's pretend this is our window. And we're going to add... We're going to have a marquee div here. Give that just a little bit of background so we can see. That's going to hold everything. And everything's going to scroll within this container here. And now let's just copy and paste that and kind of shrink this a little bit. So this is going to live. Let me shrink it a little more so we can see. Change the color. This is going to be content div. This is going to have text or image or whatever you want inside it. And there's going to be a duplicate of it that lives right over here to the side. And the way infinite marquee works is that we translate this in the x direction to the left right until the set, the duplicate gets to where the original was, at which point we snap it back instantaneously to where it began. And that just is gonna repeat infinitely. So like I said, we're gonna use GSAP for this one. I've got an empty Webflow project here and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna call this page uh, min high 100 VH. And I'm just going to flex center center so that I can center everything really easily. And let's make that marquee div here. Again, that's the, oh, my Excala draw is this big one here. And this is going to take up 100% of the width. I want to, since I'm going to have two content divs in here, I want this to be flex horizontal. They're going to be next to each other. And then overflow for that is going to be set to hidden. And now I need to put my marquee content div inside. Okay, so we've got that in there, and then that is where I want to put our text. And let's say marquee, put a period there, and we can copy and paste this two or three times. Now marquee content is going to be flexbox, also horizontal, and I want this a minimum width to take up 100% of its parent, which is the marquee, right? And then since we don't want these all to be on the left, let's say we're going to space these around evenly, and we can add a gap of, say, one rem. And we'll add that to the marquee as well. OK, and that's the basic setup of what we want to do. Again, we want to copy and paste this. So if I remove overflow hidden, then we have a complete duplicate over here. But I'm actually going to use JavaScript to do all that for me. So let's go ahead and delete this marquee content. And with marquee, we'll go ahead and set that back to overflow. Now, in the settings here, I have a empty code sandbox file. We're linking to the index.js file. That is this right here. And let's also make sure that we have GSAP in there. Okay, just gonna copy paste this script file. That needs to go before this so that we have access to the GSAP object. Okay, save. And actually let's make this text a little bit bigger so that we can see wonderful glory. Delete these two. Not deleting. Oh well, we'll make it work. And copy and paste, copy and paste. OK, let's go ahead and publish that. And while that's publishing, I'm going to come in here, document.add event listener. We want to, when the DOM content is loaded, that's when we want to run our first function. I like to call it init. You could call it whatever you want. But let's go ahead and define that function, const init equals a function fat arrow. And we'll console log loaded. Save. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is I want to get access to our marquee element that's on, that lives in the DOM. So let's go ahead and call this WB data. You can name this whatever you want, and I'm going to call it marquee. Need to publish again. And rather than say console log loaded, we can say const marquee equals document dot query selector open close brackets WB dash data equals quotes, marquee. And now we can say const marquee content equals marquee dot first child. Make sure we spell this right. And we can console log, make sure we're getting the right things, marquee and marquee content, save. And now if I refresh, 
come into console, we see we get our marquee and our marquee content. Now something we want to do is we don't want to access marquee if it doesn't exist. Let's say the user doesn't actually provide it. So we'll say if not marquee, then we want to return. And same thing for marquee content, because we're going to be accessing a lot of the properties on this stuff. But if it doesn't exist, we don't want to throw errors in the console. Rather, we just end the code. OK. And I don't need this right now. But the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this marquee content, because right now we only have one, and put append it to marquee. So I'll say const marquee content clone equals, let's get this, dot clone node. We're going to call this. And we're going to pass a value of true in there. What that does is it's going to clone everything uh, nested inside. And we want all those text divs to clone as well. And then we're going to get that marquee, and we're going to append marquee content clone. So let's save. And now if I refresh here, and I come to our elements tab, now I can see I have marquee content twice. You're not seeing it because I have overflow hidden, but we have marquee, and then we appended a, just a duplicate to the end. So now all we need to do is start animating this thing with GSAP. Uh, the first thing we want to make sure we animate is that we travel the correct distance, right? And so the distance that we want to travel is the width of the marquee content plus the distance of the gap that we've set, because the gap is, is affecting on both sides. So what we're going to do is let's figure out how we're going to get that gap. And when I'm kind of figuring out what I want to, what values I want to get, I like to do that in the JavaScript console. So to do that, let's get a reference to our marquee. Let's go ahead and copy that here. And we'll get a reference to the marquee content as well. OK, so what I can use is the JavaScript has this get computed style function, and I can pass marquee content to that. And that just returns a ton of <clears throat> styles associated with this uh, div. So we don't want a bunch of styles. We want to get one. And we want to get property value. So we're going to use this function, get property value. And for that, we want to get what is the column gap. And that gives us 16 pixels. And then the other one we want to get is width. And that gives us 929 pixels. And we see if we resize, let's try that again, then we get a different pixel value. So that's really interesting, right? This is something we're going to want to use. Now, something you might notice is that these are returning strings. And we want these as numbers because we're going to do math with them. So uh, to do that, all we're going to do is wrap this with what's called a parse int function. And this takes a string and then a radix. For radix, we're going to pass 10. Uh, look up the MDN documentation if you want to see more about that. But that's important to get in there. Otherwise, you might get a value you're not expecting. And then I'll just copy and paste this in here. And we can see it just drops that px and gives us 933. And I can do the same with our get property value of column gap. And we would expect this to give us a number of 16. So let's drop that in there. OK, 16. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy paste this. And we will say const width equals that. And I said width, but what I meant was width. And we're going to do the same for const gap equals that. OK, so now we have our width and our gap. And so we can say const distance to translate equals, and it's going to be negative 1 because we want it to go left, right, which is in the negative direction. And we're going to say gap plus width. So we're multiplying negative 1 by gap times width. And now let's have GSAP animate this stuff. So we're going to say GSAP dot. We're going to use a from to animation. And from to takes, it takes a parameter of elements to animate, and then where we're going to start from and where we're going to go to. So elements to animate is just going to be both of these marquee contents. So one way I can do that is just say marquee.children. This parameter for GSAP is really flexible. You can pass it all sorts. You could pass it a class name, whatever. That's how I'm going to do it this time. And then we want to get our x value. We want to start from 0. So that's pretty easy. And we want to go to an x value of distance to travel, right? Distance to translate, excuse me. And within that, we can also specify some other things. We can specify the duration. Let's say we want this to take 5 seconds. Uh, we can specify the easing. And we're going to say easing none for this, or what would be linear. Because we don't a scrolling 
bar is just going to be a marquee. It's going to move at, at the same rate, right? We don't want to add any easing to that. And then lastly, we're going to repeat this infinitely. So we can say repeat negative one, save that, and let's come back here and see what we get. And we've got a marquee that's moving. So I'm tracking this is where we should snap, right? And you didn't even notice because it all worked. Now something, an issue we're going to have is if we resize, you'll notice we're going to start getting some snapping, which is not what we want, right? So let me resize that again. I think I missed it. It's going, going, going. And then look, it's all, it's all messed up. And so what's happening here is that within our code, we, this GSAP animation or this tween as they call it has been defined and it's just rerunning, but it doesn't know when we resize to recalculate this distance to translate. It's still using our old value of width. So let's go ahead and fix that. The way we're going to fix that is on the window, we're going to put an event listener on that too. And anytime the user resizes the window, we want to run a function, right? Now we could define an anonymous function like this, but I'm just going to say play marquee. Let's, so we'll define a new function. I'm going to copy that. And everything from our marquee is going to go in there. So let's say const play marquee equals a function. And now we're going to copy and paste all this and put it in here. OK, so I saved. And let's make sure we're still working. Oh, something's broken. You know what it is, is I haven't resized yet. So I put all this in a function, but I didn't actually call the function. So down at the bottom of the function, yes, we defined it. We'll just go ahead and say, hey, once we've defined it, let's run it. So I'm going to save, come back here, and refresh. Now it starts up. OK, everything's going. Now if I resize, what's going to happen? Tracking here. And look, no snapping. You'll notice that as we're resizing, it's, it's running this calculation. I can show you what's going on here. Console.log, we want to say, let's log width, right? And come back here, refresh. And now look at every little second, it's it's refreshing that. And there's there's two things we need to do to, to clean up this code a, a little bit. The first is that we're actually creating a new tween each time we resize. Um, so GSAP is going to just make a new tween. And we're not noticing it because the computer works pretty well, but we don't want to bog down our computer with all these all these tweens. And the other one is we can debounce it so that the browser waits until the user is done resizing to, to recompute this. So let's go ahead. To do this, we're going to say let tween. And we're just declaring a, an empty variable, really, is what we're doing here. And we're going to define it. We're going to set tween to this GSAP. And what we want to do is we want to if we resize the window, we want to get the progress, and we want to kill that tween and then restart it. Um, so if this is the first time, we should expect tween to be pretty much nothing. So let's say let progress equal tween dot progress. This gets us the progress of our animation or zero. So if it's the first time, we're going to say progress is zero. Other say otherwise, we're going to get the point within the animation that the tween is at. And then next, what we want to do is we're going to say, um, we basically want to kill our tween, but we only want to do that in certain circumstances, right? And the circumstance that we want to do that is when the, um, when the tween exists. So we'll say tween, and, and this is going to say, if the tween exists, then we're going to tween.progress, set it to zero, and kill it. OK, so the tween no longer exists, but that's OK, because we're going to recreate everything, all the tween right here. And now what we want to do is we want to say tween.progress is progress, because we saved that progress. And so once we've recalculated, we're going to set the tween back to where it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and save and refresh and just hope that our, oh, nope, we got, our, got something incorrect, undefined reading progress. So we've got progress equals here. Did I misspell? Ah, OK, so this we want to say, um, if the tween exists, then we want our progress to be 
tween dot progress. Otherwise, we want it to be zero. So this was accessing tween dot progress, even though the first time it runs, tween didn't exist. So let's go ahead and refresh. And now we're still seeing the same thing. We need to debounce. But let's see if we resize. Everything's still working. We've we fixed the issue that wasn't really visible, but we wanted to make sure that we knew is in that where we're creating multiple uh, GSAP animations. Okay, so last but not least, let's go ahead and debounce this thing. And for that, I'm going to actually pull this just general generic debounce function that I have. And so we have debounce. What it does is it takes a function and it defines a timer, and then it's going to return another function. And that function, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to wait a specified amount of time. Here we're saying 500 milliseconds. And after that amount of time, we're going to call that function. And so what we want to do is we want to call our play marquee function um, after this 500 milliseconds. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste, debounce, and to debounce, we're going to pass play marquee. Need another closing parenthesis there. Come back. Let's refresh. And now you'll notice I'm not getting width console logged until I stop for about a half second. Half second. Half second. And you can play around with the values. It's kind of jumpy. Like if I say 200, it's going to recalculate faster, but I don't have as much time for my user to wait. So you, you'll get a little bit less. All right, so you can play around with this however you want. I'm going to leave it at 500. And the last thing we want to do is right now we're setting the duration to 5. It might be nice to allow the user to specify. You could change this to 10 or 5, something fun I like to do uh, if I were to, you know, release this on, on my own or something is let the user specify what they want to do. So something you could say is duration 10 and say, sorry, not save, publish. And let's go back to our code. And we can say const duration equals marquee dot get attribute. And we'll pass in this duration or five. And again, this is going to return a string. So let's go ahead and put parentheses here. Say parse int. And don't forget, it takes a radix, so comma 10. And now we have this duration. And we can just pass it like that. And now look, it's slowed down. And notice we don't have to say duration, colon duration. This is a special syntax. It's going to do it automatically if we just say duration, uh, if, if it equals the variable name. All right, well, that's everything for how to build this marquee. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later. Yeah.